Hey, a friend, Chris Van Deviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I wanna dig into a utility plugin that is pretty amazing and that has come about since the 10.5 update, and that's the Auto Sampler plugin. In a nutshell, Auto Sampler allows you to sample that huge external MIDI instrument collection that you have, but you can't carry around with you. You can sample those instruments and then play them as software instruments using the new sampler, which is what replaced the EXS24. But it's not just for external MIDI instruments. In fact, you can sample software instruments as well. And it's pretty amazing. So today I just wanna quickly walk you through the interface and how to sample using the auto sampler and then how to load up the instruments within the sampler. Auto Sampler was a technology developed by a company called Redmatica. And then Apple, a few years ago, bought Redmatica and then began to integrate these technologies into programs like Mainstage and Logic Pro 10. Mainstage, in fact, had Auto Sampler first. And it was kind of a question mark over a lot of people's heads as to why Auto Sampler was not immediately ported to Logic if it was in Mainstage. But we're here now, we got it, it's awesome. Now, I don't own any external MIDI instruments, but the way it would work is if you had a MIDI instrument, you would connect the MIDI port from your instrument to your audio interface, presuming you have a MIDI port on your audio interface. This is what will communicate the information from Auto Sampler to the keyboard to play each note as it's being sampled. And then the instrument itself would need an output of some sort to communicate the sound of the instrument to your audio interface. So then Logic could record the sound of that external MIDI instrument. Instead, I'm gonna use some instruments from Arturia, native instruments, just to go through this process. Let's open the auto sampler. And the interface may feel kind of overwhelming, but basically we have a view of the sample note range and the range starts from C1 to B5, but you can extend it either using the drop downs or just dragging across on the left and right handles here. And you can also type in the notes that you prefer. And then we also get the option to sample every so many notes. So we could sample every single note in a selected range. It will take quite a while to do this based on other parameters. For the sake of this demonstration, we're just gonna pick every six semitones. We're gonna keep it easy. Then we have the option for round robins. And the idea is, is that you have multiple samples that aren't necessarily the same each and every time. So you get more of a realistic performance. Imagine drum samples. You don't necessarily want the same kick drum hitting over and over again. They'll sound like a machine gun or totally not natural or maybe orchestral samples. So round robins are great for that. Then we get to pick the sustain or basically how long each note plays as auto sampler is recording each sample. I'm gonna keep it at three seconds though. You may wanna play with this depending on the sample that you're working with. Maybe as you hold a note, the beginning of the instrument plays a certain style of performance, but then as it sustains, it changes. In fact, let's select this analog dreams track. And if I just hit one note, just pay attention to the sustain of the entire note. You kind of hear it scoop down in pitch and then continue to modulate. The velocity layers, if we hover our mouse right here, we have an option for 16 velocity layers and each one of these is one of the layers. So I have three velocity layers. So it starts at a velocity of 12, then 85, and 127. So we're going for like a low, mid, high. But again, it depends on the instrument. Some instruments react differently at different velocities. So you're gonna wanna test drive this. And the velocity response is set to custom because I adjusted one of the parameters, but you have anything from exponential to linear to logarithmic, and there are various options in between. So we'll set it to linear, and I'll set this down to 11. Next up, we have an auto loop function. For an instrument like a synth, there's a good chance that when you hold a note, it's gonna hold for as long as you're holding down the note. And therefore, you're gonna wanna set up some sort of looping so the note doesn't just die off unexpectedly. You expect it to react the same way that the actual instrument itself reacts. There are many options to choose from, whether you just have no looping, or you have auto sampler search for the best loop points, or search with crossfade, or reverse crossfade. And there are two other options, Penrose machine and bidirectional. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I'm not smart enough to know this stuff, so let's just take a look here at the manual on page 656 in the Logic Pro 10 effects manual. And it says here that the Penrose machine set is searching for the best loop in each sample. It takes a snapshot of the sample and then manufactures or synthesizes its own loop based on the snapshot. Bidirectional, 
is where the loop is cut and then doubled in length, and then the resulting loop is smoothly crossfaded back into the original sample. To keep things easy, we're just gonna set this to search with crossfade, and then we can adjust for the auto loop start and end. So do you want it to start at a particular point? 40% into the sample, up to 90% of the sample. Again, these are parameters you're gonna have to play with and it's based on the instrument because certain instruments are made up of a lot of samples and there's a lot of delicate information in all those samples and you have to customize per instrument. And then we have one shots and one shots are going to be samples that are played for the entire duration of the sample. So think a snare hit, the moment it hits, it's gonna continue playing regardless of other samples that are being triggered. The only other bit to be concerned with is the input gain because you don't want this to be clipping while you're taking samples. So you wanna test drive your instrument by playing a note. Set it to a high velocity just to double check. Cool, so we're in good shape. The other detail to keep in mind with Auto Sampler is that any effects between your instrument and Auto Sampler will also be sampled. So if we play something like Distortion, like the Bit Crusher, and let's mash this up a bit, this is going to be included in the Auto Sampler when it's sampling the instrument. And in fact, I'm gonna leave it on there to sample so we can check it out. Now this process can take some time, so I'm going to begin by auto sampling Arturius Selena, and we'll start the process, we'll hear some of what's going on, and then I'll speed up the video just to you know quickly get through, not to take up too much of your time. And after that, we'll sample Native Instruments Analog Dreams with the Bit Crusher, so you can hear that too. So starting with the hybrid keys, we're gonna hit sample and it's gonna start its process and it's literally gonna go note by note every six semitones, taking three samples of each note and then creating an instrument out of that to play in sampler. So if we press sample, we're gonna set this, I've done some testing beforehand. We're gonna call this uh, hybrid keys one and it's an EXS format. So the EXS still lives on and we hit start. And then we'll begin to see it sample and then I'll speed up the video. Cool. We've sampled that instrument. Let's now sample the other instrument and we'll make this super quick for you. So we have the auto sampler and bit crusher. Let's just test drive for the level. Yeah, it's kind of loud. So let's bring this down maybe three dB. All right, let's now sample this. Call this the analog dreams. Okay, cool. We've sampled the two instruments. Let's now see how Auto Sampler did. I'm gonna go up to the first, the hybrid keys, just play a couple notes on here, so. Okay, let's hear it over here. Uh, that sounds pretty close to me. Let's hear this Analog Dreams with the Bit Crusher. And using sampler. Hear it again. So a little different, I would say that there's a little less velocity. It's kind of dampened a little bit. So I could probably play with the parameters of the auto sampler a bit more to get something that that's more accurate with this instrument. But I would say that's very usable and really, really close to the instrument with the bit crusher in between. So again, Auto Sampler is an amazing tool for sampling both external MIDI instruments, software instruments, and anything in between, really, if you're including plugins in the chain. 
So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much. I'll see you tomorrow.